Okay, so in our analysis of the uh, Poisset flow, or the what we call sometimes the laminar flow in a pipe, um, we came to uh, a result that the frictional forces uh, on the walls of the pipe were actually equalized by the pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet of the pipe. So the pressure difference acts on the cross-sectional area while the friction acts on the walls of the pipe. So I'd like to talk about this for, um, well, for an extra minute. So let's look at this particular um, relationship between friction and the pressure drop. And before that, we mentioned the word laminar. So this flow is, um, is widely known as laminar flow, um, the Poisset type of flow. And the reason why it's called laminar, it comes from the wor word laminate. And the laminate is the transparency uh, paper. Um, and if you look at this, uh, you have a sheet of transparency paper moving on a top of another sheet or moving on top of another sheet and each one is moving in its own plane um, and what it um, all right so that's why it's called laminate laminar flow so it comes from the word laminate so now uh, going back to our discussion of friction versus pressure let's look at the energy equation here this is one note i'd like to do so we have seen this picture in chapter three where you have a pipe of length l and diameter d uh, where you have flow coming in at a certain mass flow rate velocity pressure and, and um, uh, height from mass conservation we uh, and it's leaving at mass certain mass flow rate velocity height and pressure so mass conservation tells us if this is a steady flow uh, mass in will be equal to mass out, which means that the velocity in will be equal to the velocity out. And let's assume that there is no difference in uh, in height z between the in and out. And the there is no pump or turbine, so if we apply this as our inlet to the our control volume, and this is our outlet, and apply energy, we have friction between the fluid elements as well as friction between the walls of the pipe and the fluid. And uh, let's plug in this to the energy equation. We don't have a pump. We don't have a turbine. Um, we only have friction and uh, pressure. So that boils down to so pressure at the in minus out. And so the W dot friction here, if you rearrange, will be equal to the M dot PN minus P out. And this PN minus P out, as we have seen in the previous slide, is the delta P. That's PN and that's P uh, at the out. Um, so that's our delta P. And in fact, if you look, um, if you go back to your thermodynamics course, M dot over rho is the volumetric flow rate, Q delta P. So that's the type of thermodynamic uh, work that you have Q um, delta P for an incompressible type of fluid. Um, that's your um, type of friction work that goes in here. So that's energy that's our energy point analysis of this pipe flow. Let's do a force balance analysis, which we have done on the previous slide by solving the navier stokes equation. We also see that the frictional force uh, on the pipe wall divided by the area of the uh, luminal area. So this is what we mean lumen. Uh, lumen is the internal area of the pipe, which is the shear stress, it is also related to the pressure gradient um, on the pipe, delta P over delta L. Um, so now, what we called this previously is that this is the frictional pressure drop. And that's the frictional pressure drop. And w the reason why where the energy goes, it goes in the flow work. So the PN minus P out, the energy that goes to friction, in fact, eats, uh, is, eats out of this uh, flow work, the PN minus um, P out. So uh, this is an important note on the energy equation. We will revisit this uh, in more depth when we talk about uh, turbulent and laminar uh, pipe flows uh, in chapter six. Uh, but keep this uh, in mind because we will revisit it in more detail.
So let's do, um, let's solve a problem. Um, here we have um, a gravity driven unidirectional flow. So let me, let me explain this picture. So we could read this first. Given the gravity driven unidirectional two dimensional fully developed oil film draining down this vertical plate, um, what is the velocity distribution in the oil uh, film? How does the velocity distribution look like? Um, in the oil film, Vz w as a function of x. First thing you want to pay attention to is the coordinate system z um, and x. z is along the plate, a gravity is in the negative z direction, and x is um, the perpendicular distance from the plate uh, into the film. The film, oil film of density rho and viscosity mu has a thickness delta so let me just the the best example that i could give you here is take a cup of uh, of oil or water uh imagine this don't do this at home uh if you're doing it with oil take a cup of oil and just splash it uh on a vertical wall and when you do that what you'll see is that um the oil will start seeping down in in threads and hopefully in a in a film if you uh, try and massage it a little bit uh, so it'll come down in a film and that film is very thin so this is the film we're talking about so here we've splashed the oil somewhere here on the wall from a cup um, uh, from a cup we splashed it it splashed, splashes everywhere but we're particularly interested in this part that seeps down on the oil film so typically uh, the flow takes a while before it gets fully developed so here is a developing region development region and beyond a certain point the oil film becomes of constant thickness and it becomes fully developed it becomes unidirectional in the development region all these assumptions uh, are not valid so it's not unidirectional in the development region that's where the splash happens um, a little bit below or, of, or um, to the lower side of the splash uh, the flow tends to become more and more unidirectional to dimensional but in the development region where we you take your cup and just sp splash it smash it against the wall um, uh, the flow is none is not two-dimensional it's three-dimensional and it's still developing so it's not fully developed um, but it's all still driven by gravity now that we are out of the development region and uh, the oil is seeping down in a, in a steady fashion now uh, the question is what is this velocity distribution so now that you have an idea a physical idea and you can imagine in your head what's going on um, let's try and solve this uh, you see the coordinate system is zx so we expect most of the momentum to be because it's unidirectional in z the momentum will be in the z direction the negative z direction so it makes sense that we look at uh, the z momentum but before we do that we can look at the x and y um, the flow is two-dimensional, which means that in the y direction into the page, the y direction is into the page, um, there is no variation in my flow. Um, so d by dy is zero. So let's look at, first thing we always look at is the mass. Um, so let's see what terms cancel and what do not cancel. If my flow is unidirectional in the z, that means the v and the u are zero. So uh, they'll cancel out, and if it's that, uh, that gives me the flow being uh, fully developed in the z. Uh, the dv dy is zero also, not only because the v is zero, but because it's two dimensional. The d by dy is also zero uh, because the flow is two dimensional. It's independent of y. Uh, so each term of those. Um, three terms in the continuity equation is identically equal to zero and that um, now let's look at the x momentum uh, the flow is unidirectional so the u is zero so each one of those u's is zero so we end up with the pressure being independent of x and y we also get that the pressure being independent of y and let's look at the z momentum um, this term is steady, so we cancel it out. Um, the u is zero, so this term cancels out. The v is zero, this term cancels out. W is non-zero because that's where the motion is, but the d by dz 
because we are fully developed is zero so that term uh, cancels out too we have gravity in the z direction so we'll keep that we don't really know much about the pressure so let's keep this for the time being and see what we um let's let's leave it we'll come back to it in a sec um and then let's look at those two terms the dw dx we don't know much about it we know that the f so here is my w it's the velocity uh, in the z direction and this is x so we'd expect that this would be non-zero because of what we we'd expect that our flow our solution is going to be just like in partial differential equations you somehow had to uh, guess your solution before you actually find your solution so we're guessing it's going to look something like this we don't know the exact shape but at least we know its direction and um, so on and that helps us to under to keep this term in uh, this term would be zero because it's two-dimensional and this term is zero because it's fully developed the d by dz is zero so we have those one two and three terms gravity pressure and the viscous um, shear stress so uh, and gz is in the negative um, z direction so we'll substitute for gz with minus uh, g Let's look at the pressure for a second. And um, it, we said that the y momentum equation told us that the pressure is independent of y, and the x momentum told us that the pressure is independent of x. So let's keep that in mind. We will we will need it here. Let me just uh, erase here pointer. Okay. Um, so. Now, uh, now that we know that our um, pressure is independent of y and it's independent of x, let's look at what happens here. Let's take a, um, let's see what's happening at the oil film. We know that outside the oil film, again, go back to the, to the imaginary experiment you, you did where you took a cup of water or oil and splashed it against the wall. Um, and you get a really thin film of oil on the surface of uh, of the wall. And now, um, the pressure outside the oil film, just because there is air, is p-atmospheric. So in this region, the, uh, the oil film pressure is p-atmospheric. And now let's take a, a constant z, we vary with x. We, uh, and let's look at the pressure uh, variation with x. We already know that dp dx is zero, so there is the pressure variation with, in the oil film. There is no pressure variation with x. The pressure variation with x should be zero, so the pressure is independent of x. So if this is p atmosphere, I'd expect on this point and this point that the flow, uh, that the pressure of the oil is also p atmospheric, just because p is independent of x. Let me take a different z, which is here z2. We also know that the pressure uh, of the air uh, is atmospheric. So the fluid particle of the oil right here has atmospheric pressure. And if I take this x, also pressure is independent of x. So this will be p-atmospheric. This will be p-atmospheric. So if all those points are p-atmospheric, so I'd expect that everywhere in the oil film, uh, pressure is atmospheric pressure. So in fact, there is no variation of pressure with z so i have here is my z1 and here is my z2 um, so just by knowing something about the pressure variation with x now we could conclude that this dp dz is also zero no variation of pressure with z from our um, mental analysis that we have just uh, done so the pressure is everywhere in the oil film the pressure is in, is atmospheric so it's independent of x y or z um, so our gravity-driven flow boils down to the viscous stress and gravity. And it makes sense because gravity is pulling you down, um, pulling the oil down, and friction is trying to oppose it. Uh, the wall is trying to keep 
the stickiness of the oil on the wall is trying to keep it in place while gravity tries to pull it down and there and once it becomes fully developed unidirectional in a steady fashion these two forces on the oil will uh, equal out until we so we get a steady fashion of flow um, so uh, you integrate this just like we have done before uh, you have the uh, in the z direction g equal the viscosity over density del square w you integrate once and twice and you get c uh, you get a parabolic uh, form of the equation you get c1 and you get c2 uh, you apply your boundary condition at this surface you have no slip and at the outer surface you have um, you go back to uh, the boundary conditions uh, presentation or video and you'll see that we have an interface here and we have to have equality of shear so the shear the viscous shear stress on the oil side at uh, x equal delta should be equal to the viscous shear stress on the uh, air side so the shear stress from the left and the right uh, at the interface should be equal and that's the tau zx it's the friction in the uh, z direction uh, the uh, viscous shear stress for oil is just uh, the viscosity of oil times the strain rate the dw dx and for air is the uh, viscosity of air dw dx and now let's take the oil viscosity to the other side uh, so we get viscosity of air divided by viscosity of water and um, in this particular example the viscosity of air is way less it's much much less than the viscosity of oil it's much less than one so this number is very small uh, which makes this whole term to be very small which is approximately equal to zero so it's safe to say that at the wall uh, sorry at the interface here uh, the shear stress uh, is zero just because the air doesn't have enough viscosity to um, to um, provide a reaction so there is no reaction force in there uh, that's what the shear stress is zero now if I had a lot of wind if I had the air moving uh, if this DWD air is very large then this equation might not be uh, correct so here we're also saying that the air is quiescent for us to be able to say that um, dw oil by dx is equal to zero so you plug that in you'll end up with c1 equals zero and we already found c2 equals zero and you find your relationship between um, uh, for the velocity distribution and you'll see that it's parabolic as it is uh, here in this uh, slide um, so that's your gravity driven flow you apply your boundary conditions you'll see you'll get them exactly that there is no slip at the wall so your solution is correct and you'll get a zero velocity gradient at uh, x equal delta and there are more problems that we could do this will be on Moodle for you to um, to look at and contemplate and study in your own time um, so all, I think the solutions the solutions will be on Moodle or they're already there we'll double check let's move on to a um, a different type of example and we touched on this uh, when we were talking about the Navier-Stokes equation at the beginning of this chapter a couple of videos ago um, so uh, imagine that you're driving in your car uh, and uh, as you're driving in your car uh, you hit the brake and you're holding your cup of coffee um, what do you imagine is going to happen to the coffee in your cup if you if it's filled um, quite a bit you'll see when you hit the brake the coffee will actually spill forward um, as you have guessed correctly and now imagine that your car is stopped and you hit the gas pedal uh, pretty hard so you accelerate forward and you're still holding your cup of coffee uh, where would your coffee spill it's it's gonna spill towards you uh, if you're sitting there um, and we want to analyze this type of problem uh, we're going to make the assumption 
so this is we're going to make the assumption that the fluid is moving as a rigid body uh, what we're what that means is that if I put a drop of dye here and a drop of dye here and a drop of dye here let's say with a hypodermic needle I put ink dots there so I can draw an imaginary triangle uh, at point time t equal 1 and time t equal 2 uh, during all this time the triangle will still keep a triangular shape um, let's compare this to a non-rigid body motion such as the flow in a pipe that we were looking at uh, a minute ago if I draw my triangle I put three dots right here at time t equal zero we have this triangle and now let's look at time t equal one um, this particle would have moved over here uh, and this particle if it's at the same level uh, the same radial location it will have moved here but this particle would move faster uh, because here we have the maximum velocity so it would move a longer distance so you'll see my triangle still a triangle but the angles are actually different. This angle became uh, much um, uh, much smaller. And um, uh, so I got a deformation in my fluid. In a rigid body, we don't have a deformation. The We're making the assumption that the fluid moves as a rigid body. The triangle remains a triangle as the cart is moving and accelerating. Um, so we're making the assumption that there is actually no shear stress, no variation of velocity with distance. That's distance, x, or y, or z, and there would be no... Uh, so here we have shear strain rate and shear stress. Here we are not having strain rate or shear stress. So we're making the assumption that uh, we have no shear forces within the fluid. And if we have no shear forces, the only forces in a fluid are actually the pressure forces. Um, so uh, this this example would probably be more applicable to when you're accelerating in your car but more so if you're um, in the launch of um, space shuttle or in one of those space rockets where you have an extended peri uh, period of acceleration of um, seconds and minutes um, that will um, change the pressure within the fluid and that's what we want to study so think about those examples too where you have a launch a, a um, an extraterrestrial um, launch of an object uh, this is the kind of acceleration steady linear accelerations we are talking about so let's consider a fluid that's um, moving under steady linear acceleration where there is no shear stress and it's moving under rigid body just like uh, the car that's right over here and uh, if we're making the assumption that the fluid is under rigid body the dvdx there is no va no spatial variation of velocity it will be equal to dvdy and dvdz that would be equal to zero with the capital v being the uv and w the three components of velocity and if i have a constant acceleration in the x and z, uh, um, the du dt would be my ax is a constant and dw dt is az and is constant. And let's make the assumption that um, our problem is two-dimensional. So we, are, we don't have any variations in the y direction. So it's 2D. And when we have this, let, we can plug it back into the Navier-Stokes equation in the x, y, and z, the x, y, and z momentum con um, equations and we'll end up with a simple um, equation so here is our navier stokes equation in the x momentum we have the du dt and we have the pressure gradient so they're still there everything else be is zero because variations with space no shear d by dx d by dx d by dy d by dz these are all zero and same thing with the y momentum and the z momentum. The y momentum, we're saying our flow is two-dimensional, so it tells us that the pressure is independent of y. And for the z momentum uh, equation, the acceleration is the acceleration is balanced by the pressure gradient force. And if we have gravity, then we'll stick it in in the z. So let's keep the gravity in to make um, the problem 
uh, more interesting. That's AZ and that's AX and they're uh, constant. So let's, so my X momentum equation boils down to AX is equal to minus one over rho dp dz, uh, dp dx, I'm sorry. Uh, so that tells us, um, we already know that P is independent of Y, so P is only a function of X and Z. Uh, so we integrate this, we get P of X and Z, is, it's P would be minus rho X plus a constant, and that constant has to be a function of Z. Do the same, integrate the Z momentum equation, um, and you're going to get the same pressure distribution, but now I have integrated in a different path would give me a relationship with z. So I'm going to get minus rho az plus g times z because when you do the, so here you move the dx, you separate variables, you move the dz, so you get you integrate az dz will give you a or az plus g times dz um, gives you az plus g times z when you integrate. And you end up, you have to have a constant of integration, which would be a function of x. But since we're talking about the same pressure, this, this is the same pressure. And just by looking at the form of the equations, I have an, a, an x dependence here, and this is my x dependence. And I have a z dependence here and z dependence. I can conclude that my h of x is rho a x, x, and my f of z is rho a z plus g z. Um, so we'll just get rid of this, get rid of that, and plug um, uh, plug for rho x here or rho z uh, on top. And then we still have some, some actual constant. So my pressure distribution in this card that is linearly accelerating in the z and x directions, where gravity um, is non-negligible, would have this for would have this formulation. The pressure distribution is not only a fun. So let's assume that my cart is not um, accelerating. So my ax is zero, and my az is zero. So I get p um, would actually be independent of x. P of z will be minus rho gz, minus rho gz. And where have we seen this equation? Yes, we've seen it in a static type of fluid. Uh, so as you go, as the you go deeper in a fluid, your pressure is going up. So in the minus z direction, your pressure increases. You go deeper in the ocean, you get um, higher pressures. But now you want to think about the acceleration as some other because it it adds up. Uh, it's so here the z acceleration is adding up to the g to the gravitational con, uh, acceleration, and the ax is. So you want to think of the accelerations uh, having um, uh, an effect just like gravity uh, on the pressure. So uh, they're adding some um, some stress to my fluid. Um, so how do we get the constant? For to get the constant, we need to know a point z and x where p at z and x is known, and that's how we get our. Uh, constant. Now let's talk about constant pressure lines. Now let's take a cup. This is your cup of water that you have on your desk as you're watching this um, video and Z is pointing upwards. We see that this is the free surface pressure is p atmospheric um, and at a constant z, along this line of constant z, the pressure is constant. So all these are constant pressure lines. The pressure here is rho g h1. This is the pressure along this line is rho g h2 plus p atmospheric and so on. And here it's p atmospheric. So these are constant pressure lines that are uh, of interest to us to know. That's why when you set your cup of water on your table, the water is level. Um, and this has been used in instruments like level meters to um, see um, how parallel you are to the surface of uh, the Earth or how perpendicular you are to the gravitational vector. But now once when you have the accelerations AZ and AX, this picture will be slightly different. So let's see what the constant pressure line would look like. That is, would your coffee spill forward or backward when you're accelerating uh, and decelerating on a flat plane. But what happens if you're accelerating or hitting the brake on a non 
flat plane, so or non-horizontal plane that is on a plane that's inclined at a certain angle. Um, you're going, you're let's say you're moving up. You hit the brake. Will your coffee spill forward or backward? Because now it becomes a little bit more interesting. So let's see what the constant pressure lines look like. So for constant pressure lines, we want to say to set p equal constant, right? So set p equal constant, and when you so you do p equal constant and you get those terms here and so, and add up this constant to that constant so we end up with a single constant so um so we've already included in there so constant is minus rho a x x minus rho a z plus g uh, so i get a relationship for a line x or z as a function of x um which is the relationship of this line so this line tells me where so let's rearrange this z as a function of x this is a, a linear relationship it's a slope times x plus an intercept um, right so depending on this slope whether it's uh, leaning forward or backwards so whether the uh, your coffee is going to spill forward on the dashboard or whether it's going to spill backwards on your lap uh, depends on the sign of um, of this term of the slope um, of the x um, so your car if your car is um, let's say if your car is moving in the x let's take a different example your car is moving in the x direction and you hit the brakes so that means so the velocity is in the x direction but you're and you hit the brake then your acceleration is actually in the negative x direction but if your acceleration and velocity are in the same direction um, then your acceleration is positive when your acceleration is in the opposite direction to your direction of motion then it's negative um that that uh, assuming that the direction of motion is in the positive x direction so you see this term can be positive or negative and um the slope um or the angle would be just the tan inverse of this uh, slope over here um and one as always as in every slide that i have said in or in every example that we have solved we're always saying please pay attention to your coordinate system because your coordinate system is very important um, z is pointing upwards x is pointing to the right g is pointing um, downwards um, so and um, this is our um, we now have found a relationship for the pressure distribution in a fluid that's accelerating in the x and z direction and it's still in a gravitational field and now we can predict uh, what the shape what the inclination of the interface is uh, going to um, to be so here is one example that we uh, want to look at they tell you uh, that you have a cart that is moving uphill on a 30 uh, degree inclination surface um, the fluid levels in the car the cart length is 100 centimeter and the fluid level at the front is 15 centimeter while the fluid level at the back is 28 centimeter the question is is the heart is the cart hitting the gas pedal or hitting the brake pedal um, so I would like you to try and give this a shot um, on your own and we will post the solution on Moodle or we'll just post it in the second video so with this we um, actually have concluded what we want to cover in chapter 4 we are going to skip the fluid moving and under constant angular uh, speed so I will leave that uh, for you to um, uh, for your own education to study on your own um, and it's interesting that the free surface will when you're uh, so let's say you take a bucket you um, tie it to a rope and then spin it over your head you'll see that the free surface is going to actually 
have a parabolic type of um, of shape and uh, this is the derivation so that's why you get a parabolic you get um, the pressure distribution as a function of r and z you said this constant so the relationship between z and r is parabolic that's why you get um, um, a curved surface it's a similar situation but it doesn't directly apply to our rigid body motion when you have a vertical kind of flow when it rotates you're going to get this parabola kind of um, and even when you spin when you um, when you mix your sugar into your cup of coffee um, and you stir it with a spoon in a circular fashion you're going to get this depression towards the center of your uh, cup and you're going to get sort of this kind of parabolic um, parabolic uh, shape of the free surface even though that's only an analogy because we're not moving in a rigid body motion when you have your spoon stirring your your cup of coffee just because you're creating a lot of shear stress and we're making the assumption in those derivations that we have no shear stress but we still have some resemblance we still have some of that effect going in there in addition to all these extra shear stress effects okay very well so this is our we conclude chapter four over here and um, um, we I as I said please try and do this uh, I might do just a, a very quick video um, to just solve this um, uh, for you so please give it a shot and I'll see you uh, in the next video where we're covering uh, chapter 5 and talking about um, the non-dimensional numbers and we're talking about scaling of fluid problems that should be a very interesting chapter just because uh, especially in these corona times because um, there are so many take-home experiments that we can do together okay uh, thank you everyone for listening and i'll see you in the next video lecture